Gen, Gen X was the last generation to grow up pre-internet. Well, it's it's almost as if we had one foot in, and I think you and I are. I'm born in '77. Me too. Um, all right. Um, so we were in our mid twenties when the internet really became a thing. The beginnings of the internet were around in the '90s, but it was very rudimentary. It was it was much more like an enhanced phone conversation, right? It was like dial up and it was very, totally. very, very rudimentary, but it wasn't anything that permeated your life. It was something you'd still, you'd have to be home, you had a modem. It was very difficult yeah, to connect. Yeah, it's more fringe, it was yes. more novel. Yes. Uh, and also I wanna, I wanna kind of touch on this very quick. You and I were zennials. What does that mean? You ever heard that term? No. Everyone at home. What does that mean? There's a term, zenial? it's gonna pop up on the screen right now. It's called a zennial. Why, because we crossed the 2000? So, and I have the Wikipedia definition, a zenial, X-E-N-N-I-A-L, zenial, is a micro-generation. Because Gen X is, you know, you got some Gen X people who are like in the 60s. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, 77 to like 82 is a zenial, which is basically uh, a gen, having Gen X features... but also having millennial kind of features like growing up with having some, some of your formative years mm -hmm. with uh, computers and the internet yeah. and everything. So like, yeah, all of our, all of our years up until I know until I was a, until I was a freshman in college, I got on AOL and then I became, I was in chat rooms and I was surfing mm -hmm. and doing stuff like that. So that little slice of micro generation is like that little golden, uh, area or whatever um what was my point with this thing the zennials the internet yeah we had we had one analog childhood digital adult life adult life yeah we're the last ones um but to your point you were saying the last uh gen x that passed but actually let's go back to your point just to double click on that you said you were saying how much transformation that has happened in this generation. People are not aware of that. Like, what, what I mean is this. What I mean is we were the last generation. Like, like you said, we have one foot. We had our childhood foot in the analog world and like our adult world in the digital. I don't think people alive today understand, first of all, how impressionable kids are from say birth to say 20 years old, how impressionable and how malleable the, the brain is, the human brain and, and how it is that you actually learn and, and develop a sense of who you are, that part. And they also don't understand how powerful the impact of say a, a digital world is. So powerful. So but when you Jesus. combine those two, when you, when you imprint a digital world onto a very young, impressionable population, you fundamentally change them biologically. Because what you're saying is oh, from zero to 18, you're malleable biologically. And we were introduced to things like the internet and social media when we were already formed. Right. But we were, all, we were also coming at it from a base of an analog, an analog childhood. Right. So we understood how different this was mm -hmm. from what it was, from what, how it was that we grew up. It'd be very different than if you had always grown up that way. Um, it'd be like, it'd be like, imagine the last generation that had their childhood, uh, in horses and carriage. And then in their twenties to drove an automobile for the first time versus the first generation that always grew up with cars. Right. Of course. They, yeah, just think about how, yeah, even yeah. that 10 years, think about how they would look at horses and how that generation would look at cars just from that 10, 20 year difference. Right. It's the same thing with us. We, um, we grew up where in order to occupy our minds, we had to use our imagination. Instead of having something dictate or imprint the, these images onto you, we grew up, we grew up in a, a physical community, physical proximity. Right. Most of the friends that we had were in physical proximity to us. Totally. The digital world allowed you to become friends at a, mu at a much greater distance for the first time, which is not bad, but if that's all that you've known, then you don't have the same relationship to the people that are around you and you don't have the same need or desire or drive or incentive to get close to the people that are around you. You know what I'm saying? But even to your point of coming from, you know, 
having like six channels to having infinite channels mm -hmm. uh, in our lifetime, having uh, yeah, having only analog. I remember endless nights sitting in my room in high school, just Trying staring. To find something to watch. Well, not even that, but just staring at a wall. Like just sitting in the silence of my room, like just being bored, mm -hmm. you know, and like spacing out. And like, there is no spacing out now. Like, it's just any, like I notice uh, most young people in my building, a lot of, a lot of shithead influencers in this building. Uh, I don't want to say that, I'm joking, but a lot of young people in this building. And as soon as they get on the elevator, there's a space of dead, of dead space where they're confined and there's nothing for them to do immediately out the phone, comes out the phone, you know? There is no spacing out, you know? It's just like, boom, on the phone. Um, I mean, even VCRs into like streaming, like, so that's what I was double clicking onto what you were saying. The immense technological change in our lifetime that we've seen, when people look back, it's gonna be, it's gonna be apparent, very bugged out. And honestly, the thing that worries me is that we're kind of like, we're guinea pigs on the bleeding edge of this whole technology you know, our nervous systems constantly being connected, you know, constantly receiving text messages and, and constantly disseminating and, and a, a nonstop flow of information. Well, it just keeps coming. Like, even how do you deal with that? Like, just con social and information and like, it's, it's insane. Well, I think, I think one, of the, one of the biggest jokes that big tech has played on us on us as a people is making us believe that they're not as far advanced in that technology as they are. I think they're a lot more advanced in understanding how the digital affects the biological than we are aware of. This is what I was just like drilling down to what I was saying. When you're a kid, when we were children, the things that would influence us and that we would have to have affect us had to be analog by design. So we would have to figure out things to do, tactile things to do. What do we have in the room? What's around us that we can use to entertain ourselves? Right. When you were sitting there bored in your room as a kid, you were forced to use your imagination to invent something. Or Until invent Nintendo or, came around, yeah. by the way. But even, but yeah, but even yeah. the Nintendo was, it, it still was say like a, it was still you, it was still, like a, like a personal experience. And maybe the people in the same room would be around and it would still be yeah. somewhat of a communal experience. Like the idea of connecting and playing with people from somewhere else just didn't exist. Right. So a lot of it, a lot of that, a lot of my time was spent that way as kids. We would all come over to my house because I had the system and I had the game right. and it forced us to be together. It was still a way of bringing us together sure, in an analog yeah, yeah. way. I love that. I loved watching my friends play <clears throat> games. Yeah, and, and, if, and for me, especially like I was pretty damn good at video games. So like my sister... If she wanted to see the ending of a game, I'd have to beat it. Otherwise, she'd never be able to see how it ended. And she would love to just kind of watch it unfold like a movie. For her, yeah. it was like watching a movie or watching a TV show. But when you have a digital influence that is able to come in and take the place of what used to be analog, I say this all the time on the podcast, like a young, impressionable brain, pre-adolescent or adolescent brain is absolutely defenseless against the algorithms, billion dollar algorithms that have studied, that have such a, such a granular data on the person to know what to feed it, to keep it biologically um, and, and hormonally addicted, chemically addicted to the screen. Yeah. They're defenseless to it. And when you hit them with that enough, it's the same thing, that's what creates an addiction and that's what creates, say, a user for life. It's the same reason why, like, you know, we, we make certain drugs illegal or we say that you can't have these drugs until a certain point in your life when you can overcome that with conscious thought as an adult, as being a responsible adult. Um, I think... Uh, it's, 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 in, it's really incredible because we are changing the biology of this next generation. I don't know if it was, it was Gen Y, then, it was the, then there's millennials, and then there's Gen Z. Gen Z... Gen Z is the one that I'm, I'm concerned with the most. Millennials, I mean, to a certain extent, because they were sort of born, but they were born in a digital world, but the digital world hadn't advanced enough where it was able to really encroach on their lives. They're still somewhat analog, but I think, and so my fear is when that last millennial dies, what you're gonna have is, you're gonna have an entire generation, you're gonna have anyone alive that was born before the internet. You mean entire Gen X, when the yeah, last when Gen X dies. Right. When the last Gen Xer dies, mm -hmm. you won't have 
anyone on the planet that was alive before the internet or right. before this hyper connectivity that's a different species of person so this is uh, you saying that this these people the the gen z or whatever by mm -hmm. the time when they're 50 60 70 yeah, that kind of human is going to be that weird dystopian kind of like socially like awkward they're the patient kind of disconnected zero. They're, like, they're they're patient zero Patient zero. What's patient zero? Well, patient zero is the idea. Like whenever there's a pandemic, they're like, who's the first patient? Patient zero is like the first one. Oh, okay. Right. right. So they're like the patient zero generation. Where like that's the that's the generation that, the first generation that was born completely in a digital world, completely hyper connected world, no sense of um, the analog world that we grew up in, and also no sense of where it really get where it really becomes a problem for me. And we discuss and argue this on the finance junkies is the the idea of privacy, the idea of privacy, what government and what companies should know about you, what information should be public about you, what should you have to give up in order to use a service or a platform, especially if these platforms and services are built into our life. Like think about it like this. When we were kids, um, when we were kids, you needed a phone, okay? Everyone needed to have a phone in their house. But what did it cost you to get a phone? You had to pay a monthly bill, and you had to give them your address. They needed your address and ID, and that was it. But now, what do you need to have a Facebook page? What do you need to have an Instagram account? And what do you need to give them in order to get that account? You need to give them your, your name, you need to give them your email address, your physical address, your phone number, and then you need to open, you need to allow them to collect all other sorts of data all about you. Of other data. All the travel data, all of your contacts. That's very who true. You know, that's, that's fucking fucked What you're up. into. That's real dystopian right? shit. What, right the shit that you buy, they need to know. Um, Not only that, when they hear uh, you talking or something and then your phone, I, right, all they the need time, to have, I They need to be stuff. able to scrape data yeah. off of what you're saying. And then they need to be able to, they need to make a profile about you, right? The things that you're into, the things that you're not into. That's a, that's a, a lot that you're giving up to get something that is pretty much a public utility at this point.